What are the differences between the different NVIDIA G-Sync technologies? Well, in this video, which has kindly been sponsored by AOC, the panel manufacturer, I'll be covering absolutely everything you need to know, including how to properly enable it. Now, to kick off this video, I think it's quite important to highlight the benefits of NVIDIA G-Sync, and furthermore, how it compares to AMD FreeSync and also the likes of V-Sync. Now, in terms of the latter, you might actually see V-Sync plastered around on certain games. You'll have the option to enable it if you so wish. Now, it's not something that you will want to do immediately, at least if you're not going to be looking at G-Sync or FreeSync. And the reason behind that is because when V-Sync is operating on its own, it actually has quite a bit of extra input lag. Now, for those who are wondering, input lag is the time it takes for your mouse click or, for example, a controller swipe to be going through your system or indeed your console and then it responding on your monitor. Serious hardcore gamers will certainly not want any sort of input lag at all. And even for more casual gamers or regular users, you might even still notice a bit of extra input lag in comparison to running your monitor without any sort of V-Sync technology. In other words, V-Sync is something that you will not want to run. Although, again, it does come into fruition when we do enable it with the other technologies. And I will touch upon this very shortly. Now, as for AMD FreeSync, it is actually a very similar technology to NVIDIA G-Sync. However, due to it actually having no module built into the monitor, it does not benefit from the full VRR range. Now, the VR range is effectively the ability of a monitor to go from one refresh rate to the other and therefore giving you a tear-free gaming experience in that range. Now, more commonly, you'll find that an AMD FreeSync monitor will have a range from 48 hertz up to its maximum refresh rate, let's say 170 hertz in the case of the AOC Aegon Pro AG 275 QXL, a League of Legends branded monitor, which is also, funnily enough, an NVIDIA G-Sync compatible monitor. And yes, I'm going to talk about the differences between the G-Sync certifications very soon. Now, the reason behind that is because, well, it does not have that G-Sync module built in. And if you compare it to the likes of the AOC Aegon AG274 for QG, which has a native G-Sync module built in, this actually can go from 1 hertz all the way to its maximum refresh rate. And in said monitor, it's up to 240 hertz. Therefore, you can see the differences over here that going between 1 and 48 hertz, a non-G-Sync module monitor, aka an AMD FreeSync certified monitor, will actually struggle with the lower refresh rate range. There are certain ways of mitigating that, but effectively the benefits of running an NVIDIA G-Sync module monitor is the fact that you actually have a full VR range and therefore gives you an even better and smoother experience no matter the amount of hertz or indeed FPS that you're outputting. Now with those differences out of the way, why would you actually want to enable said technologies? Well, in a nutshell, for you to get a smooth buttery gaming experience. Now let me explain. If you've got a graphics card that's outputting over 400 FPS, but your monitor is only capable of outputting, let's say, up to 240 Hz, such as the AOC Aegon AG274QG, it means anything over 240 Hz is effectively being lost on your monitor. Yes, you'll still be able to see those frames, but they'll be displayed in a multitude of different ways and therefore results in a phenomenon called tearing. This is because you've got multiple frames being displayed at once. Now, for you to mitigate this, you want to synchronize the frames from your monitor to your graphics card. And this will therefore enable the likes of V-Sync, AMD FreeSync, or NVIDIA G-Sync. As I did point out, V-Sync does add extra input lag because your graphics card has to effectively wait for that frame to be rendered and then for it to be thrown to the monitor. This is where the added input lag comes in. AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync mitigate this, specifically NVIDIA G-Sync as it's got a G-Sync module that's built in directly into the monitor. Yes, indeed, you've actually got some proprietary hardware built into the monitor in order to synchronize those frames. Thus why NVIDIA G-Sync is a little bit more expensive in comparison to AMD FreeSync monitors. This means that your graphics card is working on a graphics card level to synchronize its frames with the monitor, therefore resulting in a tear-free, buttery smooth experience. So you're now hopefully getting an idea what G-Sync brings to the table. So what are the differences between the G-Sync certifications? Well, let me break it down. You've got first off G-Sync module monitors, then you have got G-Sync compatible monitors, and then you've got non-certified G-Sync monitors, which will unofficially work with NVIDIA G-Sync. So let's say the differences over here. 
First off with G-Sync module monitors. We're going to take the AOC Aegon AG274QG as an example because it has an NVIDIA G-Sync module built into it. Now this means that you are effectively getting a full VR range from 1 to 240 hertz, which is the maximum refresh rate of said monitor. And of course, if it's a G-Sync monitor that has 144 hertz, it'll go from 1 to 144 hertz. Hopefully you get the idea over here. You're getting the full VR range and it's going up to the maximum refresh rate of the monitor. Then over here, you're also getting a certification from NVIDIA. It means it's got no sort of artifacts and also has gone through a rigorous testing procedure which involves 300 plus tests. But then you should also bear in mind that you don't only have G-Sync as a certification, but you also got something called G-Sync Ultimate. This has changed in terms of what it's meant over the years, but at the time of filming, G-Sync Ultimate effectively means that you're getting also a lifelike HDR, at least according to NVIDIA. And this is exactly what the Aegon AG274QG has. It's a NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate monitor. So therefore it has got that native G-Sync module and it also has got fantastic HDR capabilities. Now in addition to this, a monitor with a G-Sync module also incorporates a variable overdrive. NVIDIA claims this will provide users with the optimal performance as it aims to minimize the amount of overshoot as the refresh rate changes. Now in case you're wondering, overshoot or inverse ghosting is the trail that follows an object. This usually occurs as you ramp up the overdrive setting of a monitor. The higher the overdrive, the faster the panel will respond, but the lower the visual experience will be. You can see how this affects the AOC Aegon Pro AG274QG by comparing these UFOs that I took. So now, what about when it comes to G-Sync compatible monitors? Now these are really not to be confused with G-Sync module monitors, purely because they don't benefit from the full VR range. As I mentioned before, with AMD FreeSync monitors, you go have a range of 48 Hz up to the maximum refresh rate of the monitor. Taking for example the likes of the AOC Aegon Pro AG275QXL, you have got a VR range from 48 Hz up to 170 Hz, which is its maximum refresh rate. Indeed you can see here that you're not dropping down all the way to 1 Hz, and furthermore it doesn't have the rigorous testing procedure that goes through the NVIDIA labs. As a result, it means that it's certified to not have any sort of artifacts, but NVIDIA cannot guarantee that it's going to run through every single test and therefore does not get the certification of HDR, nor does it get the certification of 300 plus tests. So what about when it comes to non-certified G-Sync monitors? For example, the AOC Aegon AG274QS, a 300Hz 1440p IPS monitor, not to be confused with its near and identically named sibling, the 274QG, this monitor has not been tested, at least at the time of filming, by NVIDIA. And this means it's actually got the AMD FreeSync technologies built in. However, unofficially, it does actually run NVIDIA G-Sync. The way to actually achieve this is to connect over DisplayPort and therefore have a graphics card that is an RTX 10 series card or above. This means that I'm still benefiting from the NVIDIA G-Sync technologies, but I don't have the full VR range, so therefore I'm not going from 1 to 300 hertz in this respect, but rather going from 48 hertz up to 300 hertz. In other words, over here, if it's not been certified by NVIDIA, you can't actually guarantee that it's actually going to run with NVIDIA G-Sync. Although I will say, having tested quite a few different monitors, over 230 at least at the time of filming, most monitors with AMD FreeSync technology will actually unofficially run NVIDIA G-Sync. With that said, any G-Sync branded monitor, i.e. G-Sync certified or native G-Sync module panel, will have to support low frame rate compensation, LFC for short. This means there is no stuttering, juddering, nor tearing at lower frame rates, resulting in a smoother experience. This actually also forms part of AMD certification process for FreeSync Premium and FreeSync Premium Pro, which coincidentally the latter features in the AOC Aegon Pro AG274QS. Now with all that out of the way, how do you actually enable NVIDIA G-Sync? Well, in most cases, you want to be connected over DisplayPort. However, if you've got HDMI 2.1 with VR technologies as well, such as, let's say, a television, you will actually be able to use NVIDIA G-Sync over an HDMI connection. I just always suggest DisplayPort specifically for PC users. And that's what we're actually going to be concentrating on today. Now, in this respect, in order for you to enable it, you'll want to ensure that the monitor has actually got NVIDIA G-Sync. 
If it does not have a G-Sync module built in, you'll want to enable the AMD FreeSync option through the monitor's OSD. It's pretty simple, and when you do enable it, it will turn your monitor dark and then turn it on again. So don't be surprised about this. Now, after you've done that, you want to navigate to your NVIDIA control panel and enable G-Sync in full screen operation. Now, for certain games out there, they actually run borderless or windowed. You will want to actually look at Blurbuster's very extensive guide as to why there are certain differences that you will have to do based on what I'm actually currently saying. Most games actually run on full screen, so I'm not going to go and dwell too much into it. But in this respect, you'll just want to enable the full screen option, at least for my current test. Then you're going to want to go on the Manage 3D Settings. This can be found towards the top of the control panel. Now this actually gets a little bit confusing, but let me try and explain. First off, you're going to want to make sure that NVIDIA G-Sync is running and it's actually been selected through the set option. You're then going to want to enable V-Sync. Yes, the dreaded V-Sync that I was telling you to disable, you're actually going to want to enable it while running it in conjunction with G-Sync. And I'll explain why very shortly. Then you'll also want to set the low latency mode to on. Then when you've done that, when you're going into a game, such as let's say Counter-Strike or for example Destiny 2, which is one of the tests that I actually used, I actually was able to run a frame limiter. And here I wanted to set it 3 FPS down or 3 Hz down from my monitor's refresh rate. In other words, I've got a 240 Hz monitor, the AOC Aegon AG274QG, and I'm setting the refresh rate or the maximum FPS to 237 Hz. And yes, I will talk about that as well shortly. Now once you've done that, you've effectively got the best sort of G-Sync experience. But let's say for example, your game does not support an FPS limiter. You've got two different options. First of all, you can use external FPS limiters such as RTSS, or you can use the NVIDIA control panel. In my case, I'm using the NVIDIA control panel, so therefore I can set a dedicated FPS limit, yet again at 237, and then I have to also enable the ultra low latency mode instead. This means that it's effectively trying to give you the best source of latency of the monitor. Yet again, you're going to want to enable V-Sync and therefore you're still going to get a fantastic buttery smooth experience. Now you might be wondering why should you enable all these settings rather than just enabling G-Sync and getting around with your day? Well purely because there's a multitude of different reasons, but again I would like to give kudos to the guys from Blurbusters for sharing their in-depth knowledge. Now indeed in this respect, the reason why you want to run G-Sync simultaneously with V-Sync and not V-Sync on its own, yet again as I have to quite emphasize it enough, is because anything that falls out of the G-Sync range is then being covered by V-Sync. Specifically towards the lower frames, it means that you're effectively getting a tear-free gaming experience. This is particularly useful for those people who have a G-Sync compatible monitor, thus having a range of 48Hz and above rather than anything that covers it below. A G-Sync module monitor, however, will have the full VR range, so therefore you should never fall into the V-Sync range, but it will still have the benefits of bettering the overall frame time. In other words, the overall system latency that you'll be able to achieve. Now, what happens at the top end and why does a frame limiter actually come into play? Well, purely because when you go past the refresh rate of the monitor, you'll be then falling into the V-Sync range. And this is where you'll be adding the extra input lag. So for you to counteract that and to make sure that you never fall into the V-Sync range, outside of the G-Sync range at the top end, you enable a frame limiter. 3 FPS usually below or 3 Hertz below the quoted refresh rate of your monitor to ensure that never happens. Therefore meaning at the top end you've got the frame limiter keeping you well below the G-Sync range and at the lower end it means V-Sync is also being working in conjunction with G-Sync to ensure that you get a tear-free gaming experience at all given times. Now not to confuse matters even further, but if you're a hardcore competitive gamer, you might actually want to disable NVIDIA G-Sync on a program level. I know this goes against the grain of what I've mentioned so far and is somewhat of a controversial topic around the net, but just hear me out. Here, you want to go on the NVIDIA control panel and find the program in question, such as let's say Counter-Strike or Valorant, and disable said technologies. This will effectively counteract what you've done on a global level, and therefore means that NVIDIA G-Sync will still operate on, let's say, a more graphically intense game, such as let's say Destiny 2 or other. 
Now, the reason I suggest this is if you look at my frame time analysis and the overall system latency that I attained at 144 versus 240 and 300 hertz, even on the same monitor, the higher the refresh rate was and the higher FPS means that they lowered the overall system latency. Yes, the differences became a little bit more minimal as we go up the refresh rate range, but it still meant that the overall system latency was reducing as we went up. And yes, in case you're wondering if you're running a 144 hertz monitor with 144 FPS versus 144 hertz monitor running 300 FPS, you will still also reduce that overall system latency. You can find this source of frame time analysis from other sources, which I'll link down in the description below. Effectively, what I'm trying to say is that hardcore FPS gamers are going to want to prioritize the low system latency rather than having the best sort of visual experience. And as such, as someone who's shoved over 2,500 hours on competitive Counter-Strike, this is exactly what I do. I make sure that NVIDIA G-Sync is disabled in said game. However, when I'm playing a more visually appealing game, such as let's say Destiny 2, I want to make sure that I'm going to enjoy the scene that I'm going to be portraying. So therefore, in this respect, means that I actually have NVIDIA G-Sync, or let's say HDR also enabled simultaneously, for me to get the best sort of visual experience and also get a tear-free gaming experience as well. So there we have it. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of NVIDIA G-Sync technologies. If this video has been helpful, definitely do let me know down in the comments section below and definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been totally dubbed and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.